why would anybody want to work with insects? <laughs> they breed like flies. They outnumber us. We can't control them. And they don't share our values. <laughs> The praying, <laughs> the praying mantis often devours her mate. But if it, w if it wasn't for insects, we would be dead. The plants wouldn't be pollinated, the soil would rot, and the ecosystem would crash in a matter of months. So how do we repay them for supporting us? By hating them. <laughs> As an artist, this is rich terrain. Insects are a window into the unimaginable. Their biology and behaviors are routinely bizarre and enigmatic. They're refreshingly outside the human perspective. Over the years, I've raised a cornucopia of insects, rodents, reptiles, and amphibians in my studio in New York City to film and photograph for the various projects that I work on. I use art to explore and expand my relationship to the natural world. And I'm often drawn to areas where nature and culture collide. When I show this series of photographs, I receive hate mail. How could you feed a baby mouse to a snake? But for me, I wonder why people take the side of the underdog as opposed to the snake. Or, why, why take sides at all? Perhaps if we're going to root for anything, we should be rooting for a healthy ecosystem. And we know that mice can have a lot of babies. <laughs> I can think of few animals more hated than the cockroach. But the roach, for me, is a conduit to the negative and often violent relationship we have to the animal world. The American cockroach was misnamed by Linnaeus. It actually comes from Africa and has followed us as we colonize the planet. Our home is now its natural environment. While working with the roach, I discovered that they actually don't do very much. <laughs> Besides bug us. Um, they're not venomous, they don't sting or bite or carry the dangerous pathogens that flies and mice normally do. There's nothing life-threatening about a cockroach, and they actually don't even eat very much. The female mates once, and she's pregnant for life. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't have very much fun. <laughs> so consequently, she's very choosy about who she mates with. And if she can't find a suitable male, then she lays clones of herself. She's capable of parthenogenesis. Here are her babies in a nursery, surrounded <laughs> by how we represent animals to children. I doubt the cockroach is the most dangerous animal in this picture. This is the roach going through its final molt. It's a magical transformation between adolescence and adulthood, where the roach can have sex and fly for the first time. What are the ascetics of our empathy towards animals? Would we like the cockroach better if it looked like a ladybug? People seem to prefer animals that are soft and furry, as opposed to hard and shiny, and animals that have thin antenna, I have big eyes as opposed to thin antenna. But what do these qualities have to do with the animal's importance to the environment? It points out the subjectivity, perhaps arbitrariness, of our judgments about animals in general. Unfortunate for the roach that it harbors some of our least favorite characteristics. And what we don't like, we simply kill or execute.
but usually, usually not in an electric chair. <laughs> if I was to describe a species that wages war, takes slaves, herds other animals for food, practices agriculture, makes antibiotics, and even invented the use of a doormat to keep a tidy home, what would I be referring to? Humans, but also ants. Leafcutter ants are the most complex social creatures other than humans, to quote from eminent biologist E.O. Wilson. For the past five years, I've been filming, photographing, and following the fates of 10 colonies of leafcutter ants on the Osa Peninsula in Costa Rica. I'm inspired by what the ants naturally do and work with their behavior to create my artwork. Leafcutter ants cut pieces of leaves and flowers from high in the trees and parade across the forest floor on immaculately clean superhighways to their underground colony where they raise mushrooms, their fungus farmers. In working with the ants, I noticed that they all, all weren't equally industrious. In fact, some of them are slow and not very good at what they do. <laughs> and others are overachievers. <laughs> and some colonies behave, even of the same species, behave surprisingly different from each other. They could almost have different personalities. Ants may be small, but they are far from simple. Ants are one of the few species to engage in organized warfare. Every night for a month, I filmed and photographed two colonies locked in epic battle. With their powerful mandibles, they latch on to their enemy, and like pit bulls, they don't let go. The balls of battling ants would grow over the evening, and then in the morning, I would find thousands of dead ants. Leafcutter ants invented a sophisticated network system of communication that rivals the internet. Without central command, millions of members coordinate their behavior. Their antenna touches are like text messages. It's Twitter on steroids, and at some point, a message goes viral. The accumulation of their small gestures produces enormous complexity. And they do this all on the run. They're nature's ultimate mobile communication devices. Over the years that I've been working with them, with the rise of social media, of Facebook and Twitter, I've noticed our own patterns of communication becoming more like the ants, which is not top-down, but bottom-up, not command and control, but connect and collaborate. Some days, the ants harvest mostly green leaves, other days, flowers. Sometimes they work with me, and other days, they won't. <laughs> but in the end, it's always multiple decisions made by multiple minds. And therein lies their power, and perhaps ours as well.
closing, is it possible that a human-centric viewpoint is setting the stage for an impoverished environment? We are at a time in history when we are aware of the negative impact we are having on other species. What do we love? What do we hate? What do we save? And what goes extinct? We've been drawing lines in the sand forever. Maybe now is a good time to reconsider that line and what lies on the other side. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.